G'day Bomber fans, it's contract update time. We've had some big signings in the last few weeks. Jordan Ridley, uh, Sam Durham, Elijah Sartas. We could have some more soon as well. So today I'm going to go over every out of contract player on our list and discuss what I have heard so far or what I think could be happening behind the scenes with them. So let's get into it. Starting with Jai Caldwell, who has apparently opened talks for a brand new contract. He would be following other players in his age group to sign on. This to me suggests he will be the next extension to be announced. And we can expect a multi-year deal. If Durham earned four years, you would think Caldwell would get around the same mark as well. Three or so would make sense, so we should see him sign on. Jake Stringer is supposedly being made to wait a little bit until contract negotiations start. Not uncommon for someone who may well earn his last multi-year contract if he even manages to do so. It's going to be one or two year deals from now on, you would think. He's playing good footy, but the club probably wants to assess how long that will go on for in 2024. It'll be a similar story for other older players at the club as well. So Dyson Heppel, he's going to be in a similar boat. He will take a while to decide, I reckon. And he has started off the season with a bang, being one of our very best players so far in 2024. He looks as good as he has in years, but the club won't rush into an extension. Heppel and the club will both make a decision on his future later on in the year, possibly even after the year finishes if he hasn't uh, announced a retirement by then. He is playing well enough right now to warrant an extension, but things can change rapidly as we know, especially for someone over the age of 30. There's every chance he retires as well, so there's too much time left to speculate. Archie Perkins. I've seen some reports around that negotiations may have already begun for his extension. There were some rumours around about a move to Geelong last year. He came out this preseason and said his future was with Essendon. And you would expect the club to, uh, is feeling the same way about him and Caldwell, getting them locked in for a few more seasons. Andy McGrath is our high-profile free agent, uh, vice-captain, good player, important player. He should re-sign, you would think. Uh, I'm sure he will be around the same mark as Caldwell and co. If negotiations haven't started now, they will soon, you would think. Uh, but no news around this one yet. Dylan Sheil is an interesting one. He is still not playing AFL footy. His body is not holding up. He hasn't been close to a full uh, season for a while now. There were plenty of rumours surrounding him with a trade to St Kilda last year. It didn't eventuate, obviously, but he is old. He is eating up a huge chunk of our salary cap, not playing regularly. There is every chance the club moves him on. Uh, if he was to sign a deal, though, you would expect it to be no more than one year. Jaden Hunter earned a one-year deal last year, which is never what you want as a young player, but unfortunately, he suffered an ACL tear, which has all but ensured a delisting at the end of the season. It's super rare to see a young player fresh off a one-year contract earn another deal despite playing no footy, so he will be the first one on the chopping block, unfortunately, for him. Nick Cox, on the other hand, will most likely earn an extension before the end of the year. He has played every game so far, and has, for the most part, been pretty solid down back. That's more than most can say about 2024. Uh, whether it's one year, two years, or more, it's hard to say. Uh, it depends how strict the club will be about performance with their young players, and it's also going to depend on how he performs for the rest of the season. His last contract was a two-year deal back in 2022, but he is playing much better footy than he was back then. Harry Jones, he's another who I expect the club to re-sign based off current form. And now if he completely regresses and becomes a hopeless key forward uh, during the season, things could obviously change. But he has had a pretty good start to the year uh, bar that round one game. He's fresh off a one-year contract, uh, which puts a bit of pressure on him to keep his spot in the team. And of course, we are also yet to see Nate Caddy, who well could uh, could well take his spot. Uh, so it's far from concrete. This is another one I expect to come about a bit later in the year, unless he forces us to act early through really good form. But there are certainly others more at risk than him right now as well. One player under significant pressure is Sam Wiedemann, who is running out of the end of a two-year deal. He signed back in 2022 when he joined us. He's struggling to get into our team, another one who could well be overtaken by Nate Caddy. His age doesn't suggest much upside either, which hurts his chances. I think most expect him to be delisted unless we see a drastic turnaround in form. He's certainly one of the more at-risk players as we go further into 2024. Will Setterfield signed with us at the same time as Sam Wiedemann, but he is miles ahead in terms of stability in the team. He's played every game he was declared declared available for since joining, and he has become an important uh, big-bodied midfielder in our engine room. He's likely to sign a new deal, and you would think he has done enough to warrant uh, multiple years, not just one like some others on our list. Jake Kelly, he is in the final year of a three-year contract. He's a much maligned player amongst fans. I would say one of the most disliked players at the club, but unfortunately for you guys, I would say he is more likely to earn another year at the club. He is a bit older than others I've discussed so far, and isn't exactly a solidified best 22 player, but he has played enough footy in the last few years to suggest uh, Scott sees a role for him. Now, he is definitely one who could easily find himself on the outer, and that would change his circumstances uh, if it was the case. But if I had to bet, I would say Kelly earns one year, uh, maybe at most two. No more than that, though, you would think. Kane Baldwin, a really unfortunate situation for our defender. He has a lot of work to do if he wants a new deal now. Another one who only just earned a one-year contract. Uh, he hasn't played much footy at all. Uh, Sidelined for half the year. He didn't play much in the last few years since he's been drafted. He needs to come in and play good AFL level 
level 40 when his body is right or he will be delisted. Simple as that. I hope he doesn't get delisted because he could be a handy depth player. But like I said with Hunter, if you're on a one-year deal and not playing footy, it's super unlikely you feature again. Jai Menzi. Now, he has been shocking in 2024 so far. He's been a shadow of his 2023 best and not at all what you would expect from a contract season. But I still think he is one of the safer forwards. Uh, he's lucky enough to be out of contract in the same year as about four or five other general forwards and the others below him are at risk. Uh, the club won't delist a handful from the same position though. For this reason, I would expect him to sign a deal and I think he showed enough last year as well but he will need to do a bit more if he wants uh, anything more than a one-year contract because right now he isn't really warranting any more through his performances. One of those at-risk forwards I spoke about is Nick Hind. He locked himself in for two years back in 2022 but since then he has been in and out of the side which would be fine if you were 22 or 23 but Hind is fast approaching 30. I'm beginning to think he could be on the way out. He has been the sub a few times this year. He had one full game, but really that's due to injuries. With a fully fit list, uh, he would not feature much at all, and that will be taken into consideration when his exit meeting is held. Definitely a player feeling the heat. Tex Wangadine, if Hind is feeling the heat, Wangadine has heat stroke. He hasn't played a game since 2022. He's battled injuries, bad form, everything really. He's a famous name, the son of Gavin, but I would be baffled if he manages to get back into the AFL fold and find enough form to earn a new deal. For me, it's almost a lock him and Hunter. I think they are all uh, both all but gone right now. Matt Guelphie is apparently seeking a pay rise after his good start to the year, all depending on how he returns against Collingwood, of course. He is likely to receive a contract extension, which uh, speaks to our Ford stocks. He's originally from West Australia, but supposedly is happy enough with life in Melbourne to continue living here for the foreseeable future with the Dons. Uh, this is one that won't be sorted out straight away, though. I'd say probably later in the year. Jaden Davey is another small Ford out of contract. Uh, this, to me, though, was a fascinating one. We drafted him in the National Draft uh, signing him up for two years, knowing full well that his first season would be spent on the sidelines with an ACL injury. It's all about how he looks this year. Uh, it would be really harsh, but you would think there is room for a potential delisting if he doesn't raise eyebrows. I think this one plays out later in the year, much later, even after the season is done. We'll see how he looks in the VFL. Uh, he's only young. He's only played two games so far in his professional career, but you get the feeling if he doesn't impress this season, a contract would be hard to find. Lewis Hayes is another really interesting one. You would think usually a gameless player out of contract would face a nervous wait uh, for his exit meeting, but it's tough with these lanky project key position players. My gut tells me he gets an extra year, but you never know. I think this will play out after the season, though. He isn't a high priority signing, you would think, unless he makes his debut soon and keeps his spot in the team. Todd Goldstein is another one that will play out later in the year, and I think it's mostly up to him. If he's having fun and playing well, there is no reason to suggest another year is off the cards, but we're only four rounds in, so speculating on the form of a 75-year-old is a bit silly. Uh, no matter how well he plays, though, it won't be any Anything more than a single year contract. He could win the Brownlow and still only get one more year. And finally, Vigo Vicentini. Rookies are always really hard to read. They are brought in as project players, uh, kind of back against the wall from the get-go, but that's just the nature of the sport. Uh, so he will have to impress. We have a pretty poor track record with gameless rookies. Mankara last year is a great example. So he certainly isn't safe just because it's his first year. Signs are good early days though in the VFL. He's had some decent performances. And unless I've missed anyone, that is that. A quick run through of the out-of-contract players and what we should expect from them. Them. Of course, with a full season to go, so there's plenty left to change. Let me know what you think down below. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and as always, go Bombers.